So welcome everybody. Today's class is online resources, but with offline options. And so what I'm after are resources that I can share with all of you, or maybe ones that you can even make for yourself for next fall, because you're gonna have students who are gonna be remote and online and how do you get the same material that you teach live in class to those students? And actually, I took it oh, even farther. I really wanted it um, to consider those students who don't have internet at home. That was my other thought. So as I get started here, you're going to see that um, some of this is going to not just take it to a degree of, all right, it's different maybe when I'm in person from when they're remote. And sure, now it's in Google Classroom, but I'm taking it even to one step farther. They don't have internet at home or they have siblings and they can't be live or synchro you know, synchronous with me during a live meeting. So I'm going to deliver my materials another way. So. The first thing I want to quickly demonstrate here is using a Chrome extension called Mercury Reader. And in Mercury Reader, I have a little tool that will let me clean up a web page. And I'll show you here. And so I just have a website open, and I thought maybe I could have one of you help me pick out a topic. So, Kendra. To unmute your mic and just hold down your space bar. Kendra, how about you pick a topic from this website for me to show? Oh. Now keep, keep it held down. Okay. On there, there we go. Okay, what, what one did you pick, Kendra? Oh, and I'm, we're missing her. So let me see what happened to her. We heard her a little bit. I'm still here. I clicked okay. on it, but it's not. Should I click in that box? Uh, you know, if you had left your, your cursor into the chat box, then your space bar won't work. So that's one little, that's kind of like a learning curve there. Um, if you are typing no, in the chat? No, nope. I'm hovering over food science. Okay, okay. I well, I, I didn't give you control, but yeah, just oh, tell me the okay. one you want. Yeah, so food science, or service, I mean, I feel like that would be something a lot of people might use. Okay, so let's hit this food service. So I'm in class with my students, maybe they have their Chromebooks, or they're going to go to the lab or work on this sometime to read this food service article. Great. Ah, but what about those kiddos who are home and those kids who don't have internet. So simple thing we can do here is turn on this Mercury Reader to clean up the site. So if I'm going to make this into a printable, I don't have that big banner hogging up the space and it has made these links available. Now, if I was going to now send that to my Google Classroom for Kids who do have online access, great. It's giving them a nice, clean article to read. It won't distract them with any unnecessary bits. So if I'd like at this time, I would just hit Control P on my computer. If you're a Mac user, it'd be Command P. And then I can pick, save it as a PDF. And some of you, if you try doing a print of a web page, you might get the option to save to Google Drive. When I talked about this in a past class, not everybody got this one, the option to save to Google Drive. And that's okay, because if you do at least get save as PDF, then you can have that saved and upload that then to your Google Drive later. It's just an extra step. So I'm gonna ask you, go into the participants panel, and if you already knew that you could do that, not the Mercury Reader part, that's just an extension to clean it up. But if you knew you could already do a print 
and save it as a PDF. Give me a yes. We'll take a look at how. Oh, good. So Alicia knew, Bonnie, Deb, Diana. Well, some of you guys were in that class too when we talked about it. But Jennifer Marr, great. Melissa Abrams and Nancy. Cool. Scott and Sheila too. So let's pop into the chat real quick because I saw a little comment in there. Oh, and we're getting yeses in our chat. That works too. So Neil, you didn't know that, but um, hopefully you can take advantage of it now that you do know. So does the extension only work on Chromebooks? No, I'm, I'm using a Mac. The way extensions work is you need to sign in to Google Chrome. That's the part, that's the kicker. And so you have to use the Chrome browser and you see right up here, I have my little icon. That's a signal to tell me I'm signed into the Chrome browser. If I wasn't, it would look you know, like a little head and shoulders or just nobody's logged in. And then any little extension my school district pushes out to all the staff will show or ones that I go and get. And so you see I have Screencastify as an extension. Here's my, my Mercury Reader extension and it works on any web page. So the page I picked wasn't too cluttered, but it did clean it up a bit more. It took off features that I really didn't need for the student's attention. And then I just took it one step further and turned it into a PDF. But if you want students and then they need to read these additional links, you gotta also do the same thing for these two. So no, especially those kids you're printing off packets for who don't have internet, you're gonna need to visit those links and do their cleanup, and then you would be able to make PDFs out of those two. So I'm gonna clear our responses and head back here to our next idea. Now that wasn't a resource itself. That was me just taking you here to do with any website, turn it into a resource that you can make offline. So now, let me close that up and take you to my first actual resource. Now, readworks.org. I'm betting somebody in this group, let's hear it. Go to your participants panel. If you have used ReadWorks, give me a yes. Click on your little yes icon. And Sheila has. Neil, Nancy, all right. And since I'm seeing a lot of you pop up really quick that you have, Jackie and Jennifer, okay. Now, Diana, uh, I wouldn't blame you that you don't use ReadWorks. We'll see what's in here for uh, foreign language. It is a K-12 tool and um, the focus is reading comprehension. And if you look here on the left, they have reading passages. They have an article a day and they do paired texts. And so that's possibly, you know, not a fit for everybody in our group, but especially with our, our math teachers here. But a lot of you who do use it, I want to um, ask you if, if there's something you do, hey, oh, perfect, Jennifer Marr is on the ball. Tell us what you use it for. And so Jennifer just posted in the chat. She uses it for her IEP progress monitoring. Wonderful. And it's totally free. You do just sign up for an account. Uh, that's the only thing that you need to do. And so that was great to hear. So uh, Brian, you use it and I know you're special ed, but if you wanna tell us a little more how you use it. Uh, oh, he did. Comprehension and vocab skills. And then Sheila, you use it for daily work. Cool deal. So let's take a look here. Um, what are you looking for? So if I put in here political parties, maybe. We have an election year, right? That's what we're in. Let's see what we get there. And what's nice is they're leveled by Lexile. You can pick by grades. You could also narrow things down if you, know, if you want something with question steps. 
a question sets or their step reads. And a step reads is nice because what they'll do to the same article, I'll show you here with political parties. Off here on the right tells me a step read. So their step read one will be a lower lexile, fewer words. But then step read two is even a lower lexile yet, but it took a few more words for them to do that, to get the same message across. So kids who are in class with you, fine. You hit assign and you'll, you'll have a class here in ReadWorks that they would go to. So let me get my other screen. I have another one with a student sitting and waiting. So here's a student and they'd have to enter in their teacher's class code, similar to what they would do with Google Classroom. And the student already went through the process of logging into Google and accepted to allow ReadWorks to work with their account. So here's that political parties activity that's been assigned. And so those students could get their read aloud version and they can just follow along. What's even cooler, it has a lot of those tools that are like our standardized tests. So I have my ability to highlight a row at a time for tracking. I can show my paragraph numbers and I could even see, because this had questions with it, I could see them side by side. So that's a good appeal for ReadWorks is that it gives us that standardized test feel and gives kids the ability to practice. So that is great for those who are in live with you or they do have internet at home. But what about those kiddos who have no internet? They already have a print and I can choose, do I want just the passage? Do I want both step reads? And I can have the questions included. Now, even within the question feature, then I can say, oh, well, do I want them to have answer lines or not? Oh, I do. I want space because those kids are actually getting a paper packet mailed, you know, or not mailed, but pick up from home to take home and then they can fill them in and either use a camera on a phone to turn them into Google Classroom or they just hold their packet and turn it in weekly. So the overall packet, because I pretty much checked every bell and whistle, you get the first article, then you get the step read one, and it says that right there at the top corner of the window. And then I have my step read two, and then here comes my question paper. And because I did say, yes, I want lines, there they are in my paper. And then of course that flowed over so that, you know, I could decide, hey, write, write this answer on the back of the page or I decide to print out this final page for my packets. And if I ever want to, I would have the ability then right here to hit that print icon and even do a save as PDF. So if I'm trying to track what paper packets were really going home, I don't have to log all the way back into ReadWorks and search, look for what I assigned. I could just do a save as PDF, and then I have that copy that's outside of my ReadWorks account, and I can save that in my Google Drive. And maybe I need to share that packet with my Parapro or an aide, somebody who's also working along with the students, or they just need to know what materials have been coming out. So does anybody want to share? I'm gonna check the chat. You can unmute your mic. I have to scroll up a bit. So Jennifer, you said go to skills and pick a topic. You have inference or explicit information. Are you wanting me to go to that one? Or are you just answering someone? Crystal is unmuted again. I'm going to unmute you there. And I'm going to answer this question from Lisa. For daily work, or do you use this for a bell ringer? 
Well, that's certainly an option for the bell ringers. Nothing wrong with that. Somebody like Sheila, do you wanna? Oh, she did answer you could, but in elementary you don't use bells. Got it. Takes too long for those strugglers. Got it. Now, is there something for nearly all grades and all topics on ReadWorks? And Leia answered, Kendra. So it really depends on the article you pick and use, yeah. So I'm going to pop out to ReadWorks, get out of this single article that I was going to print, head back here. So you can find content and you're right, you're not gonna know what they're going to write an article a day about, uh, but that could be, Lisa, that could be your bell ringer. It's a 10 minute daily routine activity. So you could look at those. Of course, the topics are gonna vary. And then we also have topics here on the left. So we can go for science, social studies. It's not just language arts. So we have earth and space science. And you can narrow it by your grades too. And what I liked when I saw in here, we had some social and emotional learning. And so you know, we're, we're gonna be touching on these topics heavier, I'm sure, in our fall. So we have holidays and events, and I thought it was interesting how they consider back to school an event, of course, not a holiday. So we can look and see what's in there coming up. So if you want to try that out, pick a grade level, pick a subject, and see what they have for you. And I know this doesn't cover everybody. We don't have any math in here at all. But it is something, even in Earth Day, that might fit some of our science areas because it's based on a holiday, but still fits that subject. Yeah, Kendra, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, since there's a lot of different schools and grade levels, I thought this would be a great place to ask. So to feel equitable to the kids who don't have an opportunity, uh, we, when you live by Mohican State Park, Crystal and Kelly can attest to the fact that there's a reason people come here, it's to get away. And so we do have quite a few kids that have to use hotspot data and um, it fits right in with this. So those kids are hard to connect with as easily um, on these type of assignments. And I just wondered some ideas people use this spring to connect. Um, I know I see Crystal, it looks like she's driving or something. So Crystal was getting on every single day, but she still had three kids that never got on, not even one time, but they did have internet. But I'm talking more about the kids that Really, if they got on, they would be using up their data to the point now their sister can't do her sixth grade assignment or whatever. So I heard you talk about an everyday bell ringer. And I, some of my kids expressed it was really hard to do six or seven classes a day and keep up with the rest of their family using the resources too. So I know we were looking for some ideas there. Like, like how do you do that? and not leave those kids out, I guess I'm saying. So they don't just feel like they've got this giant packet of things and they may have any ideas they use this spring. We, we were put on a, a bell schedule and that really helped so they didn't, well, we were at the high school level. I'm not sure what level you were at that you're talking about. And so our students didn't have those many classes during the day. It was uh, maybe at most um, possibly three classes. Lisa, you can chime in too if you want. <laughs> Well, and I think that's why I chose this resource is you can print many of those things and include a schedule in the materials that get mailed home. 
or I keep saying mail, but get picked up and take it home, taken home. And that way they are given some guidance to pace themselves and not get overwhelmed with that giant packet. Yeah, I, Loudonville, it was good to see that some Loudonville people were in here because I know you guys have the weakest internet connections down there. And if anybody thinks of something more for Kendra, she is at the high school level. Kendra, you are ag, so animals, agri-science, agri-food. Does that sound right for roughly what you were involved with? Okay, yep, she's hands-on with those subjects. So that was ReadWorks. Let me move forward. We have another resource. And I, this is something that might help those <laughs> Loudonville students. Um, first, I'll, I'll, hit, I, I'll hit learning media. So if you've never heard of PBS Learning Media, this is a resource that you can search by subject. And I thought I'd help Diane in this one because she you know, couldn't use rework so much. But these are the subjects you all have options to view. And if this is cut off on your screen for some of you, I'm heading over to, where's our foreign language? Ah, it moved down. So world languages, let me try that again. Head down, we even have preschool, but this is, yep, world language. I'm gonna hit French for, for Dawn. Or goodness, for Diana. Man, I changed her name, sorry about that. And so this is another source. You have a free account, PBS Learning Media, so you'll have to create that account once. When you come in, you're gonna be able to access PBS videos. And you're thinking, all right, wait, she's going in the wrong direction. I have kids with hot spots. They'll eat up their data in a heartbeat. But here's where I'm going with this. So here is a foreign language video, and we see that there are, there's this little SM icon. And what that means is that you can access support materials in addition to just this video. So let me, let me click just randomly. It was the first one in the list. And so if I look at what the support materials are, then I have an activity, a vocabulary sheet, a handout, okay, and even vocabulary cards looks like, teaching tips and more handouts. And it wasn't, I don't see it with this one. Let me, let me pick this one, this back to school, number one, episode one. And granted, what I'm going to show you here, not every video has, but now I'm looking at episode one. Again, we have our activity sheet, vocabulary, a viewing guide, and I kid you not, um, let's see, there it is. Maybe I missed it on the last one, a transcript. And so if I suspect they won't have access to the actual video, they will have, this PBS Learning Media will have transcripts of those videos. And heck, that transcript might help those kids who do have the video to follow along. So if I go through this, this transcript on the left is like a script. I see the speaker and what they say, and it's even translated back into English for me. And so this is, something you can print out. That's only one of the many resources there that's provided, as well as our vocabulary and uh, cards and an assessment and activity. So I wanted to point some resources to you guys that just wasn't, hey, here's a bunch of videos. I wanted to say there's videos and, so there's more to them. So I can pick pretty much any subject wanted to give Diana that one, but for the rest of you, we have quite a few choices in there. And another PBS related item is basically starting at the end of March, our PBS stations were doing block scheduling and then they were putting the schedule out 
And I could have swore there was more, but I just couldn't find it. I couldn't dig it out of my email. But they were saying, hey, teachers, we have our block scheduling so that kids with no internet can watch our videos. And so this just pulled up. I have Western Reserve. I have a channel 45, 49 in my area. I also get picked up for channel 25, Idea Stream out of Cleveland. Some of you are much farther south than I am, so you might get like WOSU. But look around. There's, there's each PBS station has something a little different, but all of them have the schedule. So here right now, view the weekly at-home learning program schedule. And so we all can find this. That way you have a heads up on what's coming and you'll have an idea. You'll notice that from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., they focus on ages three to eight. So let me scroll back here for you and <clears throat> get that calendar out of our way. So just on their regular channel. So that's usually the dot one channels. So there's the early learners, make those littles get up. And then from nine to six, those programs are focused more for your ages nine and up. And so like this Nova, I was thinking, huh, what if I put together what I know about PBS Learning Media, and go find this to see if there's any support materials or go find the transcript. And here's the cool thing, folks, everybody has TV, right? So if any of you go ahead in our participants panel, if you think you have students who aren't going to have access to at least the PBS, Give me a no in our participants panel. Oh, Brian, you got a no. Rick, he thinks there's a no. We're going to have some kids without access to PBS on their regular television. Brian, uh, you're in Southeast. Yeah, 35% Amish. You got me there. And how about you, Rick? You want to sound off? You're at green. I'm surprised that some green students would not have. Well, I ran into a couple families who don't have TVs at home. But for example, I don't have a TV. I mean, it's in the room, but I, I'm not hooked up to any cable or anything. So okay. I just watch a video if I want to. Otherwise, it's just a black square. <laughs> it's just a big paperweight. Well, I don't, I don't need to watch the news in this world. Um, it's not good for me mentally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've lost the news entirely because the only time I get it is during my drive to work. Well, that happens to be a 30 second walk over to my desk. And so I've lost the news connection myself. But you don't have to have cable I mean, unless you're in town and, and then they require you because you can't get a good antenna. This is all live, you know, public signals. But Leah, where are you at? at Black River. Okay, you're in my area. So you think you have some students without television access? And you can put it in the chat. Yep. Oh, you did this year. Okay. All right. Well, darn it here. I thought I had a, a one that would get everybody. But again, I mean, not all PBS programs are going to give every subject something they need, uh, but they do have solid quality videos and like this Ghosts of Stonehenge. So here I thought I was gonna be clever and head back to this PBS Learning Media. I got nothing on Nova though. So I will tell you that this, this PBS Learning Media will not have every one of their programs in here, nor did I see a, a way for me to search that I could search by program. So do they have NOVA? I don't know because they don't list them that way. They focus more on your subjects, the grades, or by standard. So you can do your search that way and whatever program they have in PBS Learning Media is what you're gonna have access to. But I found another little sneaky resource, which, not that one, but what proved to me that Every PBS station has something a little different. And so when I just did a search for that Stonehenge program and PBS, 
So if you're looking at what's scheduled and up and coming, and then do a search for that and the letters PBS, I found out of Dayton that they have on their PBS affiliate this thing called Think TV. Funny, we don't have it up here, but if you live around Dayton, you would find these a little easier. And very odd, they have every one of these Nova programs that I was looking for. So now I see I can get full length Nova videos just by going to the Dayton PBS station and I can see other seasons as well. So if you happen to use your PBS schedule and that those videos fit into what you're teaching, now you have a way to get those kids who don't have internet, they're at home, now I, you know, I've been enlightened. Not everybody even has TV, but I did want to point out there's a way to find some of these particular programs. Just you got to do the right Google search and find the right PBS station that's hosting and sponsoring that. So don't think we have anything in chat at the moment. Any questions though that someone wants to unmute? And also related to television, um, Norway. I thought that would be an area, but we don't have any Norway teachers with us uh, who also possibly, like Rick mentioned in the chat, faith-based, no TVs. So Lisa, yeah, you think there's another survey going to come out? I'm surprised it hasn't come yet um, to ask parents what you guys have. I know some of your school districts who use final forms, you guys are putting it there. So final forms is a tool that now your administrators are adding a few questions for next fall to find out, do you have internet? And even if folks have internet, it could be that if there's multiple children in the building, they can't stream a Nova program online while their other two kids are in a Zoom meeting or, or their other siblings. So we're gonna see that possibly, and again, um, look for the transcripts. Even if you're using YouTube videos in your class, every time you know, I, I pick these, I want to point out to you guys, use the transcripts. And so when you find those, definitely take advantage of them. So let me move to our next item. It's 11.42, so we're doing good on time. Smithsonian Tween Tribune. And I heard about this maybe two going on three years ago. And so this one is K-12. We're going to be getting a daily AP News articles, so the Associated Press. Other good things that we always look for are Lexile levels and those quizzes. So again, kids who are in class with us, they could be interactive or kids who do have internet at home can take these quizzes online, but we're gonna need to print these and hand the quiz form or the paper, have a modified version for those who are gonna get a packet sent home. So this is something you can sign into. Um, we do have it broken up by grade bands. So we see that here. And what I think I, I found probably the most valuable is that they have this thing called Monday Morning Ready. And it's a newsletter you can sign up for. What they do, it's an article on a trending topic. And it'll have that article in four Lexile levels. It'll also have quizzes with it and a custom lesson plan with that. So, if I'm looking just at their website, it's very clear and easy to see these different Lexile levels and then somebody can just click take the quiz. And they have other features. But I was hoping to go to the Monday Morning Ready just to show you guys a bit more about that. So we do have our teacher dashboard. 
And I get these newsletters each week. I probably should just grab one from my email. So here are articles. And again, what I'm after are these reliable resources like Smithsonian. And I don't know if any of you ever hit the Library of Congress for resources, and that is something else you might want to look into. Linking them to Google Classroom. Yes, and so that was another thing I looked out for. So let me see if I go ahead to a subject. I don't think I had one picked out for this one. Um, I thought we had some, let's look for health actually. And I'm gonna back out of here. So I'll do a subject, search for health. And now we have a PE. We have several folks who, who are dealing with science and health, like Michelle Morrow. And who else was our PE person here? Now, a lovely, what do soldiers eat around the world? I'll go ahead and click on this one. And that's right there, Lisa. So a teacher can hit assign to Google Classroom. And now it's as easy as clicking on that icon and I pick the class that it's gonna go into. I'll put it in my remote learning class. And what do I want it to be? That's an assignment. So I am gonna have the option now to go ahead and title this. And so and then I can have them you know, read the article, take the quiz, and I hit assign. But I don't want that to go probably to everybody. So I'll just pick for one student hit assign. So that was another thing I was after. How can we make these things easily go to Google Classroom? But this looks kind of junky, right? We have all these links off to the side. I have this advertisement, even though this is, you know, Smithsonian Tween Tribune. And if I had to print this off, I don't know, you know, which Lexile level am I going to print? So I have to make some decisions. And when I display one, then I can use my Mercury Reader to clean this up and then make that printable for the kids who need it sent home. Now, this is how they, they set up their, essentially their check for understanding. They have a critical thinking question. So even those kids at home with a packet with no online access, now they can respond to you. But in Google Classroom, maybe you wanted to also say, hey, um, you know, I'm going to add another document with that question on it. And that way, each student gets a copy of this question prompt. So kids at home can just flip over their paper and write on the back. So I'll turn Mercury Reader back on, off. Here's the actual quiz. So everybody could at least do a response. And then we have a quiz. I'm not going to give them feedback right now. And it, it's even letting the teacher see this. This is the quiz your students will see. And uh, what does MRE stand for? How about, uh, I think we could even ask that of the group. I bet we have a few people in here who already know what MRE stands for. Anybody want to sound off in our chat? Now it's ready to eat. Get it, Brian. Are you talking from experience? I know for me, the omelet was the worst, but it had the best dessert. It had this cookie that tasted like every, every cookie crumb flavor all smashed into one. And so, Yep, you got it. Neil's ready to eat. So he does a lot of backwards trips. Okay. 
So Sheila's asking, if we use Mercury Reader, is the option to take the quiz gone from them? So what I would do, you don't even need the Mercury Reader because when I clicked as a teacher, view the quiz, I just do a control P and print that out. Um, let me even hit Mercury Reader. And then this is what the quiz, yeah, the quiz questions disappear, Sheila. So you don't want to use Mercury Reader when you have view a quiz open. It took it away. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to go back and watch some Tremors movies for the, the comment Rick has put in there for us. Okay, so you can get those quiz questions in paper form to your students and I'm glad Sheila asked that because Mercury Reader kind of killed the quiz. And that's Smithsonian Tween Tribune. So you can go by your grade level and it's not going to organize by subject the same way. But I felt like I got more value by value by signing up for their, their Monday morning ready articles. And that way, if you're struggling, you're looking for current topics. Remember, these are from the Associated Press. They're all going to have some sense of time sensitivity to them. All right, so I'm going to stop talking about Smithsonian's Tween Tribune and I'm going to hit one more here and it's called open space. And if you did not know about open space, this is a resource from, let's see, InfoHio. And again, InfoHio, more reliable, that's our, our grant funded resource. But open space is their actual, think of it like a LMS. It's holding lessons that either Ohio teachers have made or others. And if anybody wants to sound off, because I haven't picked a subject that would fit you. Um, I want somebody to sound off in the chat what we could search for. I'll wait for some people to put in the chat what we can search for and I'll answer Lisa's question. So after using Mercury, could you still post the quiz in Google Classroom? Couldn't students also download Mercury Reader? So they could also get the Mercury Reader extension if that has been approved by your tech coordinator. Now the kids might still have to go out to the Chrome Web Store and grab it and add it. So there's no guarantee, because I doubt if they're gonna push it out for all of you um, at your district, unless you, know, you go through the process that they set, a, set out and say, hey, teachers, you have to you know, give it proposed and give us time to approve it and review it. Um, so we have habitats, we have math. Yes, we definitely gotta do some math. And um, to finish up with Lisa, the kids who are actually in Google Classroom, they'll still just go. I didn't, I didn't do it as a student, but they're just going to be able to go right to their, their Google Classroom assignment. That takes them to the article. I will say this, as a student, it seemed like you had to look for the button off to the right that said, take the quiz. So it might be worthwhile for you to sign in as a student so that in your instructions in Google Classroom, you write it out that say, students, after you read, look for the blue button on the right to take the quiz. So there's nothing additional you have to do. It's just gonna be on the screen with the article. So let's do that. Let's do math and I'll come back to Habitats too. And let's see what we have in here. So. InfoHio has all of these other filters, so we can go by standards or the material type. So we certainly don't want to find something that I can't, like if it's an activity and it's interactive like this, I'm not gonna be able to give an equal example for kids at home. 
But if I am looking for some lesson plans in here or some assessments, I might be able to use those. So math was our, our subject. And let's see. They, I wanted to point out too, before I get too far away, here at the top, they have their items the publishers, so right here, we have the New York State Public Education Department and three others. So this isn't a huge database of resources, but I'm going to just point out that's who they do have. Uh, you can also, if you don't wanna do a keyword, you can search by their collections. And so math material, that's one of our areas. We have, social studies, and you're gonna see we have career information. So I know we have some folks that might take advantage of that. So back to math here. Um, let's see, 10 times bigger. All right, so we had our census just recently, right? So I'm gonna pick that. And sometimes a resource may be nothing more than a link, but here's the advantage. We have that link back to Google Classroom like we did with the Smithsonian Tween Tribune. And I can just click and view the source if I'd like. And then it says, oh, yep, we're going to a new tab because that one did take me out to the US Census Bureau. So fine, that's okay. It took me to a website, but what it did provide was a convenient way to get that website to my Google Classroom. And so, Let's back up out of our 2020 census and let's see what else. How about something in Algebra 2? That's right there. Now we see they have whole modules. You're going to find entire, basically entire units. Now I don't want to just shoot that to Google Classroom because that is going to be everything. Like, let's look at that. New tab, got it. So Algebra 2 module. Here are all the PDFs. Now, I don't want the whole packet going to them because they'll get the teacher materials, but I might want the Algebra 2 student materials to be sent, or if I just view that PDF, what am I going to get? Excellent. So. Now, if I'm getting items like this, we know it's hard to do math online. So if I do have kids in person, they're still gonna do this in paper pencil. If I have some kids who are remote, but they do have internet, I could take and make this PDF into an editable PDF using Google Slides. And when I say that, do you guys know what I mean by that? Making, taking like a snapshot of a PDF, you open up Google Slides and you insert this page as a background. So if you go to our participants panel, uh, if you know what that means to make an editable PDF, give me a yes in there. Okay, Brian and Deb, they both say yes. So I know um, Rick, he's marking yes. Kathy, Jackie, Diana, awesome. I know that got real popular real fast. Alicia too, excellent. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, boy, Lisa, you've got some manners there. How sweet. Could you use a Google Doc? Um, if it's a PDF, I'm gonna be honest, Google Slides is the most flexible. Google Docs doesn't allow you to have a background image like in Microsoft Word. And so therefore you cannot put text boxes over top of your fields. But in Google Slides, if that's in as a background, then we could put text boxes and have all the freedom we'd want. There's even a scribble tool. So if we had a touch device like an iPad or a two-in-one, like our Chromebook maybe was a touch screen, I could do my math with that scribble tool. So we got Deb answered. So there we go. Here's another place and I could use my ability to just hit that print. There we go, here's our print icon. 
it's already a PDF, but maybe I want only this lesson to go to my Google Classroom, or I'm going to actually print it. So I'm gonna send that to my printer for those home packets. So somebody out there already has this stuff electronic, and that way I don't have to do all that hard work. And that's where I'm going to end. That was my last item. And I'm gonna stop and ask if there's any questions from you.